shows Wendy at her window, watching them all see into the sky until they were small stars. The end. That was such a great story, Grandpa. It's a classic, of course. Now, kids, it's getting late. It's time to bed. <laughs> but, Grandpa, we're not even tired yet. Couldn't you read us another story? I don't know. Please, just one more story. Then we promise we'll go to bed. Okay, okay. Go to the bookshelf and pick out another book. Which just one? Remember, we want to be in bed before Santa gets here. There's too many to pick from. How about this one? We read that one yesterday. How about this one? Ew, I hate that one. How about this one, Grandpa? Let's try something more Christmassy. What's all of this commotion out of here? Hi, Hi Grandma. Grandma. Hello, kids. We were just picking one last story to read before bed. It better be one last story. I thought I could hear reindeer hooves a couple of houses down. How about this book, The Grinch? Good choice. This is my favorite book when I was a child, too. That's why I picked it. Well, why don't you all gather around the fireplace? I baked some cookies that would be perfect to pair with a story like The Grinch. Christmas cookies. Chocolate chip, my favorite. Did someone say Christmas cookies? Yeah, Grandma baked some. I didn't know you were here, Cousin Becky. I still was worried that I was napping when I got here. I'm sure college has been tiring enough as it is, too. You can say that again, Grandma. So are we reading a story? Yeah, we're reading The Grinch. You should stay close. Ugh, what is all of this noise? Well, well, look who finally decided to show up. Did you come down for some cookies? Grandma made some. Or maybe you want to join us for a last nice story before bed. Well, what's the story? <laughs> it's The Grinch. Oh, I've heard that story too many times. I'll just take my cookie and go back to my room. I can just watch that movie. Please stay. Pretty yeah. please. Yeah, sis, have a little fun. I don't get to see you much either. I mean, it is Christmas. Please. Um, I guess, but don't expect me to get invested. I'm glad you're here, all of you. Now, this is a story about how the Grinch stole Christmas. Inside a snowflake, like the one on your sleeve, there happened a story you must see to believe. We up in the mountains, in the high range of Pontus, lay the small town of Whoville, the home of the Who's. Ask any Who and they'll have this to say. There's no place like Whoville on our Christmas day. Every window is locked, every lamppost is dressed, and the Whoville band marched in their Christmas Eve best. Arbor Day was fine, and Easter was pleasant, and every St. Fizzin's Day they ate a fizz pheasant. But every who knew, from their twelve toes to their snout, they loved Christmas the most without a single who doubt.
Now let's have one of you kids read this next part of the story. A little bit, you can read. Down in Whoville, we meet Lilho, his wife Betty Lilho, and their children, Sue, Drew, Rue, Stu, Maggie Lou, Peggy Lou, Lizzie Lou, and Cindy Lou, who are all finishing up their Who holiday shopping down in the village square. Everyone in town could be seen mindlessly rushing about. And that's about the end of our shopping for the day. A jewelry box for my May, a floral top for Mrs. Z, some Christmas socks for my senior Nicola. Sue, Drew, Bruce, Sue, Magaloo, Peggy Lou, and Lizzie Lou, where's your sister? Here I am. This seems like a lot of presents. Well, of course. It is Christmas, Cindy Lou. Go with the program, little sis. This is what it's all about. A time to eat, sing, give, and be joyful. Can't you just feel it? There really is nothing like Christmas in Whoville. As a Christmas offer for the next five minutes, 90% off everything at my stand. Oh boy, kids, see if you can get in that line. That sounds like a bargain. Don't forget my stairs, off. Wow, I didn't think Chris could get any better. You're right, Betty. There really is nothing that can be Christmas. Yeah, Isn't that right, Cindy? I guess so. But on the inside, Cindy thought that all the shopping and spending seemed like a good lunch. All Cindy wanted for Christmas was to sit back and enjoy time with family and friends. She didn't need any more toys or dolls or anything, as long as she had all of her loved ones around her. Then suddenly, all the loose siblings returned in a panic. Mom! Dad! We saw him! Who did you see? While we were there, the line right behind the tree end. And we saw him! Yeah, and he was like, grrr! Yeah, and we were like, ah! Yeah, and he was like, ee! Yeah, and we were like, ah! Who did you see? He was horrible! Who was horrible? Who was awful? The Grinch! <gasps> Someone lights with the Grinch. All who were present in that moment froze in shock at the horror of the Who Children's description. Did someone just say the Grinch? I mean, that's just what they said. Hello, Mary May Who, madam. Lou, need I remind you that this Christmas is our 1,000th jubilation. Only the most important celebration in Whoville. Every who knows this is a time you must treasure. Now, please tell me your children were not out provoking the one creature within Whoville who hates Christmas. Miss Mayor, don't shout. You're going to hurt your voice. The other interns and I will go see how to get some lemon lemon sips. Finally, go make yourselves useful. Yes, ma'am. But Miss Mayor, it was the Grinch. No, 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 ma'am. The children didn't see the Grinch. Such as a mental understanding. That's all. It was probably Martha Mayor, one of those other ladies in their outlandish outfits. Oh, well, that's really just a misunderstanding. All right, everyone, you heard the man. There's no Grinch problem here. Everyone, please get back to all of your Christmas shopping. You got it, it there, Mary Lou. Well, I need to have a word with Mocky, Molly, and Millie about the Hubilation performance anyway. After last year, they really need to dial it back. Well, I'll see you later, Lou. There's a lot of work that needs to be done. The mayor can't keep pretending like the Grinch doesn't exist. I believe our children, Betty. I just don't want them getting into any trouble with the mayor. Easy now, dear. Christmas is almost here. I'm sure nothing crazy will happen between now and then anyway. Lou, who really did think he made a good point about the mayor. He thought she was on edge a lot of the time, but recognized that she was overworked. Her employees and interns working in the town hall did what they could to make her job easier, but most of them seemed to miss the mark to put it lightly. What does that mean? It means their intelligence left a little something to be desired, sweetheart. I still don't get it. It means they're all bumbling fools, children. Oh. That must be why the mayor is always mashed. Yes, the mayor had a very tough job. Now, Molly, you read this next part of the story. Meanwhile, back at the Who household. Kids, I'm just glad you're okay, but I don't want you running around causing a ruckus every time you see someone or something that reminds you of the Grinch, like the Christmas tree folk who live next door. How neighbor? <laughs> it's so nice to finally be home after that long day of shopping. Oh, I can feel it, Will. This is the year. This is the year everyone asks. Who has the most spectacular Christmas decorations in all of Greater Whoville? They're going to be saying my name, Mrs. Betty Lilho. Now, my dears, who is the best light to move out? Say it, just like we practice. This is Betty Lou Who. Oh, very good.
it very good. We're going to have to that tomorrow after dinner. Run along, children. But mom, I put out all the socks to see Lou. I've tinsled the entire living room. I've sparkified the dining room. There are angels in the kitchen, snowman in the bathroom, ranger in the garden, and there are gifts. There are gazillions of gifts under our beautiful tree. I'm exhausted, Lou. Don't you think? Yes. Cindy, you're so right. Lights. We need more lights. Lou, you're going to need to go back into town. We need more lights. Ding dong. Oh, Cindy dear, could you get the door for me, please? Sure thing. Oh, hello, Miss Martha and friends. Oh, hello, Betty Lou. Oh, Martha, how are you? Hello, girls. Well, don't you all just look dazzling? What brings you by? My, I've never seen so many beautiful Christmas decorations, Betty. So bold, so bright. I can appreciate them even more with my sunglasses on. Ah, uh, yes, they are definitely a sight to look at. Or not to look at. <laughs> well, of course I couldn't keep up with you, Martha. Well, of course not, darling. That would be impossible. Oh, I'm kidding, of course. Actually, I wanted to stop by to remind you that our knitting club will be at my house tomorrow. Plus, I just had to say something about your Christmas decorations. Toodaloo, my dear. We'll see you tomorrow. Bye, Good night, Martha. Did you just hear her, Lou? I can appreciate them even more with my sunglasses on. I just can't win with her. She has it all. The looks, the house, the talent, that je ne sais quoi, as they say. Oh, you look fine, dear. Just fine, Lou? You look great. Oh, you really have a way with words, Lou. Good night, everyone. Good night, Mom. Hey, Dad, I still don't understand something from earlier today. Why doesn't anyone ever talk about the Grinch? You kids and the Grinch. Okay, you see, Cindy, the Grinch has always been known to hate Christmas. But why? Why does he hate Christmas so much? Something must have happened to make him be this way, right? Honestly, a lot to get into at the moment. It's getting late now. Off to bed. See you in the morning, dear. Good night, Dad. Well, why didn't the Grinch like Christmas? It looks like that's what this next part of the story is about. Why don't you take no. turns reading this part with Becky? Wait, is, is this fun? I guess. Every who down in Whoville liked Christmas a lot, but the Grinch, who lived just north of Whoville, did not. Our story continues in the dead of night in the cave the Grinch called home. He could be seen looking through trash he had taken back home with him from his trip to Whoville that day. Woo! Yuck! What's that stench? Oh wait, it's me! Fantastic! How's your trash picking going over there, Max? Never better, boss. You're a perfectly good dog bed! It's amazing what those hoos can throw away. Oh well, one man's toxic sludge is another man's poo-pourri. This one smells great. This can go right in the living room. Ooh, what's this one? It looks like some sort of soap. <coughs> oh, it's disgusting. I'm going to need some to get rid of that disgusting taste. Did you happen to come across any spoiled milk in your trash pile, Max? Sorry, Grinch, not here. Oh well, back to work. What is that I hear? Carolers? No, I can hear them all the way over here. Listen to them down there celebrating Christmas. They sound happier than Mr. McGady when the Eagles win. I hate them. I hate them all. Yes, the Grinch hated Christmas, the whole Christmas season. Now please don't ask why. No one quite knows the reason. It could be that his head wasn't screwed on his right. It could be, perhaps, that his shoes were too tight. Both of these are correct. But I think the most likely reason of all may have been that his heart was two sizes too small. A heart of any size is too big for me. Whatever the reason, his heart or his shoes, he stood there on Christmas Eve, hating the Who's, staring down from his cave with a sour, cringy frown. Oh, Max, what are we to do about these ghastly Who villains and their inane celebration? I don't know, boss. I don't have a problem with them. Well, you should have a problem with them. Here, hand me my binoculars. They should be somewhere under this garbage. Got them. <laughs> the Grinch knew every Who down at Hoogle beneath was busy now, hanging the mistletoe wreath. They're hanging their stockings, he snarled with a sneer. Tomorrow is Christmas. It's practically here. Then he growled with his Grinch fingers nervously drumming. I must find some way to stop Christmas from coming.
For tomorrow, he knew all the Who girls and boys would wake bright and early. They'd rush to their toys. And then, oh the noise, oh the noise, 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 noise. That's one thing he hated. Then the Who's, young and old, would sit down to a feast. And they'd feast, and they'd feast, and they'd feast. <laughs> they would feast on Who pudding and rare Who roast feast, which was something the Grinch couldn't stand in the least. And then, they'd do something he liked least of all. Every Who, down in Whoville, the tall and the small, would stand close together with Christmas bells ringing. They'd stand hand in hand, and the Who's would start singing. They'd sing, and they'd sing, and they'd sing. And the more the Grinch thought all this Who Christmas sing, the more the Grinch thought, I must stop this whole thing. Why, for 53 years, I put up with it now. I must stop this Christmas from coming. But how? I don't know. Max, you take the binoculars and look out for anything interesting. We have to come up with a plan, a sinister, Vile, rotten, on Christmas Eve plan. Go ahead, Grandma. Yeah. So 
Sydney Lou still felt like she needed answers about why the Grinch hated Christmas. After her parents had gone to bed, Sydney left home and headed to the town square. Surely someone had to know the answers to Sydney's questions. Hello, child. What are you doing here past your bedtime? Wait, are you with the Hivo Christmas Choir? Could you guys sing Frosty the Snowman? It's my favorite. I'm not a carol singer. I'm here to see the mayor. Oh, I see. Miss Mayor, there's someone here to see you. Oh, thank you. Now, will you go check that all the decorations will be here in time for the jubilation? Ma'am, yes, ma'am. Oh, hello there, Cindy Lou. What can I help you with? Apologies if it seems like I'm not paying attention. We are really busy trying to prepare for the jubilation. And I'll admit, my interns have been more of a hassle than a help. Miss Mayor, I'm here to ask some questions about the Grinch. Oh dear, don't be so ridiculous. We have much more important matters to attend to. Now, run along and go home. I think it's well past your bedtime. Mayor, come quickly. Someone knocked over the Christmas tree on the other side of the town square. Again? These people need to be more careful. These trees are alive. Well, I must run, Cindy. Please try to stay out of trouble. Interns, let's go. The Grinch? Did someone just mention the Grinch? Hello, Miss Martha. I was trying to ask the mayor if she knew anything about the Grinch. Oh, I can't promise to know all the answers since not a lot is known about the Grinch these days, but I can do what I can. Please, come follow me. Now, Cindy, come with me. Tell me what you would like to know. Nobody seems to want to talk about the Grinch, but I'm so curious about him. Why does he hate Christmas so much? Someone who hates Christmas must be really sad. Well, I knew him back in school. He had no sense of color coordination, and he tended to keep to himself. Although, I hardly remember much else about him as a person. That color coordination was pretty ghastly. But I was so focused on my studies. I was voted most likely to succeed in my graduating class, you know. But what about the Grinch? Oh, right. No one seems to know why he became the way he did. The last time I remember seeing the Grinch was when we were still in school. It was around Christmas time, just before the annual jubilation. Everyone who knows who wrote the important part of the jubilation is the gift, of course. So in honor of the spirit of Christmas and good who practices, we began a gift exchange at school. The Grinch happened to draw Martha's name out of the hat for the gift exchange. He was so thoughtful back then. He decided to make me a gift that Christmas. That was nice of him to make something, but that doesn't sound like the actions of someone who hates Christmas. He didn't then. But our other Who classmates heard that he had made me something and never let him hear the end of it. They ridiculed him for the rest of the Christmas season. He deserved it. That gift was nothing special. Some of the ridiculers are here with us now. That's <laughs> terrible. You know, now that I say it out loud, the whole Hubilation situation could be why he hates Christmas. I wonder. Maybe someone should invite him to the Hubilation. He'll feel all the warmth of everyone around Whoville, and he'll have to love Christmas again. Besides, we nominate the Hubilation's cheermeister at tomorrow's events. I wonder. I don't know if that's a good idea, Cindy Lou. Invite the Grinch? Did I just overhear you talking about the Grinch? I will not have this kind of negative energy around the good citizens of Whoville, especially his decidedly unchristmasy energy. Think of the season. We want everything surrounding the Hubilation to be merry, and the Grinch is the farthest thing from that. Now, off with you all, go home. I suppose that's all I can say, Miss Cindy Lou. He used to be so kind back then. Come along, girls. Let's walk Cindy Lou back home. And get another look at Betty Lou's terrible The other Who's didn't know this, but that day, all those years ago, was the day the Grinch's heart shrunk not one, but two sizes. That's a shame. Maybe the Grinch could have been a nice guy. Well, it seems like Sydney was on a quest to prove that theory correct. Let's keep reading. You go ahead, Lily. Dad? Yes, honey? I've been thinking about the Jubilation celebration. Uh-huh. That's good. And I'm thinking of doing something drastic at the Hoopalation. That's fine, dude. You better ask your mother, too. Dad, are you even listening to me? He, of course, was not listening. Yes, of course your mother and I love you. Ugh, that was useless. Honey, oh, look what I just found. These cute Christmas mites for my Christmas display. Aren't they just the cutest? Yes, 
That outfit looks great on you. Lou, that's not what I was talking about. Mom? Oh, hi, Cindy. I didn't see you there. You know, I think I have a natural sense of style. Not like that tacky Martha May. No, I'm more classy. More chic. Yes, that's it. Chic. Mom, I was hoping I could talk to you about something. Her mother, of course, would be another brick wall for Cindy Lou. Maybe that's what I'll call my design company. Betty Lou's chic interior designs. Oh, I can see it already. What do you think, dear? Mom, did you even hear what I said? Yes, of course. No, she did not. I knew you would think it was a great idea. Well, off to my knitting club. I hear Muffy May is bringing her famous scones. Bye, Mom. I guess I'll have to take matters into my own hands if nobody seems to care. Until then, I'll just get ready for the hoopalation by myself. Sue, Drew, Rue, Stu, Maggie Lou, Peggy Lou, and Lizzie Lou can't know about this. Even though Cindy did not reveal her plan to anyone, it seems the mayor had correctly guessed her idea about inviting the Grinch to the hoopalation. With her interns leading the way, trek through the woods to see if she could find out any more information. Now take four steps forward, then take four steps back. Slide to the left, and then slide to the right. And shots are real smooth. Mary who? I think we're having trouble reading this map. Yes, according to this map, it seems like we should be in New York City by sundown. New York City? Have a look at it yourself, Mayor. Oh, you fools. This isn't a map. This is a printout of the lyrics to the cha-cha slide. What a very outdated reference. Oh dear, oh dear, oh dear. <laughs> to be fair, Miss Mayor, I could have easily mistook this for a map. I don't even know why you would need something like this. Maybe it was to test out my new printer. Maybe I'm making a scrapbook of outdated line dances. Well, never mind all that now. I guess we'll just have to figure out where we're going using a compass. Oh, why on earth should I take on interns? Because, Mayor Hill, there's no one in all of Greater Whoville who compliments you like we do. Why look at your hair, is that new shampoo you're using? Why, yes it is. I didn't think anyone noticed. I'm glad you decided to start washing your hair, ma'am. What was that now? Nothing. I just said... Mayor Who, can I ask you a question? Oh, if you must. What's your plan? My plan? Your plan for coming out here in the first place. Is it about the Grinch coming down for the hubilation? Are you not nervous what might happen? Interns, I do not have time to explain this. I've... This is such nonsense. I've already explained the reason. And that is... We need to intercept Cindy Lou. If she gets to the Grinch, he could come back to town and spoil everything. If we get a hold of her, we could stop her. Now, come along. We still have a hoobalation to prepare for, but we'll keep a look at for as long as we can. Sounds like a plan. The whipper wings whipped high above all of Hoover. A trip or a slip, you'd slide all the way down. But Cindy Lou had a mission. She knew what she had to do. She'd invite the Grinch herself, that brave little Cindy Lou. Oh, dear. Can you hear that, Max? It sounds so joyful and triumphant. I must drown it out. Max, find the nastiest, ugliest record for my stash of trash. You got a ball spirit back. Hello? Is anyone home? I'm looking for Mr. Grinch. Excuse me, but you wouldn't happen to be the Grinch. Oh! Oh, you scared me, little girl. I mean, hello. How dare you enter the Grinch's lair? The impudence, the audacity, the unmitigated gall. You've called down the thunder. Get ready for the boom. Gaze into the face of fear. Mr. Grinch, <coughs> my name is Cindy Lou Hill. You see, even now the terror is welling up inside you. I'm not scared. There she is. Oh, denial. It's to be expected in the face of pure fear. I don't think so. Doubt. Another unmistakable sign of the fear of heebie-jeebies. You're doomed. What was your name again? Cindy Lou. Ha! You're doomed, Cindy Lou. Run. Run for your life before it's too late. Um, I think it sounds like you might need a timeout. Kids these days, so desensitized by movies and television. Okay, what do you want? Mr. Grinch, I came to invite you to be the Whoville Christmas Cheermeister. What? Huh? Cheermeister? <laughs> that was a good one. I know you hate Christmas, but what if it's all just a misunderstanding? Very unlikely. Huh, I don't care. I mean, even I have been having some doubts about Whoville-ation and Christmas. Doubts about the Whoville-ation? How dare she even call herself a Whovillian? But maybe if you could reunite with all the Who's and be a part of Christmas again. But maybe if you can reunite with all the Who's and be a part of Christmas. Ha! Never in a million years, Cindy Lou. That's too bad. 
I would love to have you there. I'm sorry, your session is now over. Goodbye. Please make another appointment with the receptionist on the way out. Ring, ring, you're calling forward to an automatic voice messaging system. 1-800-G-R-I-N-C-H is not available. At the tone, please record your message. When you finish recording, you may hang up or press 1 to get out. Wow. By the looks of it, there's no way the Grinch could accept now. Our work here is done, folks. Let's head back to the town for the rest of the Hublation setup. Oh, man. The Grinch even has a talking dog. Now, in turn. Please, please, you have to accept the nomination. If you're the cheermeister, you'll win an award. Award? You never mentioned an award. Yeah, with a trophy and everything. And I could win if I follow you back to the village? That's what's starting to sound like, boss. Your talking dog is right. What's your name? <laughs> Max the dog, at your service. So, Mr. Grinch, if you come... I'll be a winner. Sure, if that's how you want to look at it. I'll be a winner in a town full of losers. I like it, but I'm not sold. If I win, I just get a trophy? Yes. I also think your old friend Martha May will be there. Oh. Oh, she will? So, will you come? Oh, all right, and who knows? It may even change my entire outlook on life. You mean it, Mr. Grinch? Thank you, thank you so much. You won't regret it. Ha, she thinks I'm going, Max. The nerve of her and those who's for inviting me down there. And on such short notice. You're right, fetch me my day planner. Even if I wanted to go, my schedule wouldn't allow it. Here you go. Let me see. 4 p.m., wallow in self-pity. 4.30, stare into the abyss. 5 o'clock, practice my nasty faces. What do you think of this one, Max? <laughs> Absolutely frightening, boss. Thank you. 5.30, Pilates with Mrs. Britt. 6 o'clock, dinner break. And finally, 7 p.m., my weekly pity party. Maybe I can move back to 9 p.m. if I happen to slip down to Whoville just for a little while to see how many who's I can tear into a terrifying face. I can update your schedule if you like. All right, I'm going to do it. I'll show those who's. I said I wanted to ruin the Christmas, so this is my chance to do it. I'll show those who's who they're messing with. And so, the Grinch ready himself to make a fashionably gay appearance at the Hoobalation nomination ceremony. All in Hoobal could be seen gathered around the town square. Gather around, everyone. Gather around. Hurry up, little sis, or else you won't be able to see. Mom, just like she told us to. Here you go, Miss Mayor, although it's this year's simulation. And now, the nominations. For who among us best exemplifies the qualities of Huda? Who will be nominated to be our Whoville Christmas Cheermeister? Do I hear a nomination? I nominate my mother, Mrs. Betty Lou Who. Of course. Anyone else? I nominate Martha May. An inspired choice for sure. Anyone else? <gasps> she nominated the Grinch. Who couldn't have seen that coming? I'm sure the situation couldn't get any worse. Let's find out. After this announcement, the Whovillian citizens are buzzing with questions. What does she think she's doing? The Grinch? She's crazy. You're telling me we have to live with her. Hey, be quiet, Stu. Cindy Lou, how could you? Ma'am, we heard a mention of the Grinch. No, stand down for now, boys. My, 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 what a generous daughter you have there, Lou. Thank you, Mayor. Cindy Lou, let me tell you this. The word Grinch is a word which we apply when Christmas spirit is in short supply. Now, is this something we want from our Whoville Christmas cheermeister? Look around you. Is this not the most Christmassy town out of all the Who towns? Should be the cheermeister. I do. I do. We do. We do. We do. If it can't be me, then I do too. Grinch, 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 Grinch. Fine, fine. You people want to waste a perfectly good nomination? Well, that's fine with me. But I'm telling you, the Grinch will never come down. And if he doesn't, I will be the cheermeister. 
He will come down to Snyder. I know it. Hey, 
hey, how did you disguise yourself as a tree? I made friends with this tree here, and he helped me blend in. Thanks, buddy. Don't mention it, bro. I guess that means I won the game. He can, he can talk. talk? Hey, Grandma, I'm bored. <laughs> me too. This part is going on for way too long. Yes, let's skip ahead to the next chapter. Besides, we want to find out what happens at the Hoopalation. Wow, I am just at the edge of my seat. Christmas Cheermeister. You all made it abundantly clear as to who you wanted, so congratulations to Mr. Grinch. Come on up to receive your award, Mr. Grinch. Wait, stop the music. Mr. Grinch, Mr. Grinch. From what it looks like, it doesn't seem like he's here. Oh no, he hasn't shown up. Oh no, I wonder who could have predicted this. Well, I guess the award will just have to go to someone else. I'm here to accept my award. You mean it! The Grinch? What have you done? What a great crowd. Thank you so much. I believe I'm here to collect some kind of award. So where's this award? Come on, folks. While I'm still young. Interns, please go fetch the trophy. That's more like it. For my first order of business as Cheermeister, I order that you all go away and go home. Mr. Grinch, you can't do that. Christmas is supposed to be fun and merry and... Oh, come on, Cindy Lou. You didn't really think that winning this award would change me. I'm the Grinch. You've given me power, and I will do with it what I want. You people don't care about Christmas anyway. Hey! hey. But 
cringe. It's the most important thing to us who billions. You think you do, but you don't. All you do is go out and buy and spend without thinking. Is that what Christmas is? And the greed. Oh, the greed never ends. I want golf clubs. I want diamonds. I want extra credit on my vocab quiz. I want a pony so I can ride it twice, get bored, and then sell it. The way I see things, this whole Christmas thing is stupidity. Especially how you all want to celebrate it. It's stupidity. Police! Take this man away! Not before I escape! He's getting away after him! Don't let him get away with this! As for the rest of you, you should all be ashamed of yourselves, thinking that the Grinch would deserve such an award. Can't we just go back to the way Christmas should be? Grinchless? Now, everyone, go home and finish your own celebrations. We will reconvene with the festivities tomorrow on Christmas Day. Truth be told, Lou, I'm hurt. I'm hurt and I don't hurt easily. But after you and your family, I'm disappointed. I'll see you tomorrow. Cindy. I'm sorry, Dad. I just wanted everybody to see another side of Christmas. I felt bad that the Grinch couldn't be happy too. I guess I was wrong.
right back soon. Listen to them hooves down the Hoofville scene. They're relentless. Oh, Max, there you are. Ruff, ruff. How did it go, boss? Just terribly. I loved it. Now to execute part two of my plan. Nice. What is it? Um, I guess I haven't quite thought of that yet. Help me think of a plan. Here, Leo, you read this part. It took several minutes of pacing back and forth, as well as a game of fetch with Max before the Grinch came up with this terrible plan. I've got it! I know just what to do! The Grinch laughed in his throat. I'll make a quick Santa hat and coat. What a great Grinchy trick. And he chuckled and chuckled. That won't worry though. I'll take this hat and this coat. I'll look just like St. Nick. All I need is a reindeer. The Grinch looked around, but since reindeer are scarce, there was none to be found. Did that stop the Grinch? No. The Grinch simply said, If I can't find one, I'll make one instead. Where to find one? Pick me, boss. Where to find one? Pick me, Grinch. Where to find one? Pick the dog, Grinch. Oh, right. Thanks, Grandpa. Max, come. Ruff, ruff. So he took his dog, Max, and he took some black thread, and he tied a big horn on the top of his head. Then he loaded some bags and some, and some old empty sacks, and on a ramshackle sleigh, he, and he whistled for Max. And the Grinch said, Giddy up! And the sleigh started down towards the homes where the goose last moves in their town. I haven't gotten a turn in a while, Grandpa. Why don't you two switch off then? We're just getting to the good part. All their windows were dark. No one knew he was there. All the hooves were all dreaming sweet dreams without care. When he came to the first little house of the square. This is stop number one. The old Grinchy Claws hissed as he climbed to the roof. Empty bags in his fist. Inside the house, there were little hoose stockings hung all in a row. These stockings are the first things to go. Then he slithered and slunk with a smile most unpleasant around the whole room, and he took every present. Pop guns, pampugas, pantugas, and drums. Checkerboards, bizzlebigs, popcorn, and plums. And he stuffed them in bags. Then he slunk to the icebox. He took the hoose feast. He took the hoo pudding. He took the roast feast. He cleaned out that icebox as quick as a flash, why that Grinch even took the last can of who hash. Then he stuffed all the food up the chimney with glee. Now I will stuff up the tree. As the Grinch approached the tree about to shove, he heard a small sound of the coo of a dove. Hello? Is someone here? He turned around fast and he saw a small who. Yes, it was little Cindy Lou who. Oh no, Cindy Lou again. Act natural, boss. She stared at the Grinch and said, Santa Claus? Why are you taking our Christmas tree? But you know that old Grinch was so smart and so slick. He thought up a lie, and he thought it up quick. Here, you can take this part, Olivia. The Grinch, almost caught, said, Why, hello. There's a letter in this tree that won't light on one side, so I'm taking it back to my workshop to fix it. I'll take it there, and then I'll bring it back here. If you say so. Well, have a good night, Santa Claus. And his pib fooled the child. Then he patted her head and he sent her to bed. And when Cindy Lou was in bed upstairs, he crept to the chimney and stuffed the tree up. Then he did the same thing to the other Who's houses, leaving crumbs much too small for the other Who's mouses. It was quarter of dawn, all the Who's still in bed, all the Who's still a snooze, when he packed up his sled, packed it up with their presents, their ribbons, their wrappings, their snoof and their fuzzles, their tranglers and trappings. 10,000 feet up, up the side of Mount Crumpet, he rode with his load to the tip top to dump it. Poo poo to the hoos. They're just finding out that no Christmas is coming. I know just what they'll do. Their mouths will hang open a minute or two. Then the hoos down in Hooville will all cry boo hoo. Ha 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 After the night had ended, the hoos woke up and discovered what had happened.
Somebody say steal. Sounds like it. Sorry, I'm late, boys. I've been wrong. And I've been wrong, too. All of my scones were taken right off my counter. My diamond necklace is gone. All my Christmas gifts have disappeared. Oh, no. I wonder who could have possibly done this. I told you people one thing. I said, if you invite the Grinch, you'll rip Christmas. But did anyone listen to me? No. My town doesn't listen to me. My interns don't listen to me. Well, what are we to do now? Well, I blame my little sister for all of this. Yeah, I hope you all are proud of yourselves. Yeah, all you guys said was some random little girl. I second that. She's just some random little girl, and her mother has absolutely no style. How dare you? My style is just as good as yours, Muffy. Betty, forget about your style and think about your daughter. I am proud of her. The whole town gasped. <gasps> You're proud of her? You're glad that all of this has happened? Yes, I am. The town, and especially the mayor, were all stunned in silence. He's glad. <laughs> really, he's glad. He's glad that everything is gone. He's glad that the Grinch virtually wrecked? No. Pulverized our Christmas and jubilation? Is that what I'm hearing from you, Lou? You can't hurt Christmas, Miss Mayor. It isn't about all the gifts, the contests, or even the fancy lights. Sorry, Betty. That's what Cindy Lou has been trying to tell everyone. Can we not still share in the joy of being together? Are we not here gathered in the town square in spite of not having anything we bought to give to each other? The fact of the matter is, we do have something to give to each other. We have the gift of sharing the same space with good people who love Christmas. We can still sing and be merry without any other plans. We can share the Christmas spirit here and now together. That is the only gift I want this year. The whole town remained in sun silence, this time for a different reason. Lou was right, and they all knew it. Christmas was about so much more. Hi, Dad. Cindy, I'm sorry for not listening. You were right about Christmas. We lost sight of it all along the way. Even <coughs> the Grinch was right about how we treated Christmas. What is wrong with you, Lou? This child did nothing but lead to the demise of the Who Christmas we hold so dear. Mayor, she is right. I'll say it again. I don't need anything for Christmas. What I want is already here. My family and my friends. Merry Christmas, everybody. Merry Christmas, Lou. Oh, give me a break. You all agree with him? Yeah, yeah, yeah I do. I do. Yeah. Oh, no. And now I take it you forgive the Grinch, too? Yeah. yeah. I mean, yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, no. Assistant. <clears throat> this man here is being the complicit of the ruining in Christmas. Someone do something about this. Police officers, you can't just stand here and let this man speak to me like this. Of course not, man. They're wrong. But they're not wrong. I mean, no one's breaking the law here. You should be happy we're not dealing with the riot. Yeah, these people are really angry about their presence before. We can't back you up with that logic, Miss Mayor. Everyone seems much more happy now. Besides, you scheduled us to work on Christmas, which was a bold move on your part. <laughs> yeah, we quit. Come along, everyone. Come back to my house. We you won't get away with this. You won't get away with this. We wish you a Merry Christmas. We wish you a Merry Christmas. And so all of the Who's went to Lou Who's home to sing and be merry on Christmas. They seem to have forgotten about their gifts entirely. On the other side of town, up on that same mountain, the Grinch was waiting to see how the Who's would react to his theme. I think I can hear the Who's, Max. I bet they're having, having a terrible day. Now that's the noise I simply must hear. The Grinch grinned, paused, and put a hand to his ear. I can't wait! The Grinch did hear sound rising over the snow. Grandpa, you finish this part. Yes, he did hear a sound rising over the snow. It started low, and the sound started to grow. What could it be? Yes, what could it be? Huh? What is that? This sound wasn't sad, why this sound sounded glad. Every who down in Louisville, who tall and small, was singing without any presence at all. He hadn't stopped Christmas from coming. It came. Somehow or other, Christmas came just the same. And the Grinch, with his Grinch feet ice cold in the snow, stood puzzling and puzzling and puzzling. How can it be so? Christmas, it came. It came without ribbons. It came without tags. It came without packages, boxes, or bags. And he puzzled and puzzled till his puzzler was sore. Then the Grinch thought of something he had said to the Who's earlier. In the moment, he had just said it to rile them up, but maybe what he said was true. The Who's were so greedy before, but now I'm wondering, 
Maybe Christmas doesn't really come from a storm. Maybe Christmas means quite a bit more. And the Grinch continued puzzling. What is this I'm feeling? And what happened then? Well, and who will they say? That the Grinch's small heart grew three sizes that day. What's happening to me? I'm beginning to feel toasty inside. And then the true meaning of Christmas came through. And the Grinch found the strength of ten Grinches plus two. And now that his heart didn't feel quite so tight. Mr. Grinch! Cindy Lou, what are you doing here? I came to see you. Nobody should ever be alone on Christmas. Please, come back to Whoville and celebrate with all of us. You want me to come celebrate even after all the havoc I've caused? Yes, of course. That's the nicest thing anyone has ever said to me. You can bring Max along too. Max, come. You mean it, Cindy Lou? I can come along too? Yes, of course. Max, I wrote you into all of this in the first place. This is the least I can do. Well, let's get going. And so the trio made their way back to the village. Meanwhile, Lou, Betty Lou, the children, and all citizens of Whoville were gathered together at the two households. You would have never understood the real meaning of Christmas without all those silly presents. Who would have thought we could learn so much from her? Three cheers for Cindy Lou. Hip, hip. Hooray! Hip, hip. Hooray! Wait just a second, folks. Cindy? Cindy Lou, where is she going? I'm here, Dad. Hi, Dad. Hi, hi, Mr. Grinch. Mama's dog. He can talk. Of course he can. He's my friend, and so is the Grinch. It seems like he's changed for the better. Merry Christmas to you all. Merry, Merry Christmas, Christmas, Mr. Grinch. Cindy, first you bring all the Google together, then you befriend the Grinch. I'm speechless. Well, well, well. You got me, officers. I did it. I'm the Grinch that stole Christmas, and um, I'm sorry. I'm so sorry to you kind Hoovillians. Aww. Aww. Aren't you going to cuff me? Put me in a headlock? Blind me with pepper spray? Huh, huh, huh. It's the Grinch. You heard him, officers. He admitted it. He stole Christmas. Yeah, we I'd go with pepper spray if I were you. Yeah, we heard him all right. He said he was sorry. It even looks like everything in Who goes back to where it should be. That's not quite enough evidence for us, don't you think, Miss But you can't let him get away with this. He admitted it. People, help me out. Mark Met, you have good taste. Tell Smith to go away. Merry Christmas, Miss Mayor. But I'm afraid I agree. It seems as though the Christmas spirit has changed him. We should all be welcome to celebrate Christmas. Even you, Mayor. Let go and enjoy the day. Muffy May is baking scones as we speak. They're actually fresh out of the oven if you would like some. You should try them. There to die for. Oh, well, I can't say no to pastries. Come on inside. We can work on getting you a chic new mayor wardrobe. <laughs> hey, Grinch, are you free for dinner sometime this week? I would love to catch up. Or for me. It's been a while. <laughs> Way to go, boss. Now, three cheers for the Grinch who stole Christmas. Hip, hip.
toys and all the food for the feast, and the old Grinch himself even bought a roast beast. Now the Who's and the Grinch could all get along, and the Grinch even joined their Christmassy songs. The end. Please? I think it's time to turn in for the night, kiddos. Remember, we've given just one more story. It's getting late after all. story of the first Christmas. If you all agree to go to bed afterwards, we can read a passage or two from the real Christmas story. Thank you, Grandpa. Long ago, about 2,000 years, God sent the angel Gabriel to a young woman who lived in a town called Nazareth. Her name was Mary. Mary had been betrothed to a man named Joseph. However, she was found to be with a child from the Holy Spirit. Joseph, being just a man and unwilling to put her to shame, resolved to divorce her quietly.
give and receive our own Christmas gifts, stop to ponder what spiritual gifts you can give to the Christ child. The spirit of Christmas is the spirit of love and of generosity and of goodness. During this season, we'll look out upon the world's busy life and become more interested in people than in things. The spirit of Christmas is something we hope all of us have within our hearts and within our lives, not only at the season, but also throughout the rest of the year.
I'd also like to thank the people who worked in the backstage, um, Catherine Pettuccino, Sarah Cuso, Megan Shields. Um, without your hard work, did I miss anybody else that was back there? Dennis. Dennis. Dennis, Dennis. Dennis Collins. Lila. Lila. Thank you very much. There was a lot of backstage work going on. Mr. Rothenberger and Mrs. Britt, if you could come out as well. story of bridge because as a kid I don't ever remember hearing about that. So thank you. You're welcome. Isn't it beautiful that we were able to come together what we really weren't able to do for the last two years. And the beauty also is that after there's such a time when something isn't done, it can fall through the cracks. But we don't let anything fall through the cracks. And so we're very grateful to each and every one of you who performed this evening. It was really wonderful. And to Miss Sarah, this is really great, you know, and you made this happen. <laughs> and they certainly did remind us of the reason for the season. And all these traditions that grow up around Christmas are wonderful, but they should all point us in the right direction. And so I wish each and every one of you a blessed Advent and a wonderful Christmas as we come upon it. But I am sure I will see you all. Thank you, boys and girls. You did a great job.